Hello guys, um, welcome to this tutorial. I'm quickly in this video going to show you guys how to go about creating ferns like the ones you can see here. Um, I posted this image on, on social media and a few people asked me um, to, sh to kind of do a little video to show how I do this. And I thought why not because it's, it's quite uh, straightforward, quite simple and it's a very um, versatile technique that we can use. We, we um, if I zoom in here a little bit, you can see that um, basically what I did was I used a curve um, to kind of make the stem, and then just uh, sprouted leaves all across that. And uh, then I used a particle system to distribute the whole thing um, across uh, across a surface. So I'm um, going to try and show you guys um, how I go about doing this. So, okay, let's go to our 3D view and uh, I'm going to delete all of this. Oh, actually, let's keep this, this sun lamp. Let's delete these two. Let's take the sun lamp and move it to another layer. Let's add in a plane and let's go to our top view. Okay, um, let me open up a image. I have prepared a, a uh, image which I can use uh, as reference. So, this one right here. Now, um, this image is really badly uh, cut out. I just did, did a really crappy job of it in Photoshop. But for this quick tutorial, I guess this will work just fine. Um, this is a PNG image, which means it has a transparent background. So, let's grab our plane and go into edit mode. And let's just really quickly model the sort of uh, mesh around this, this texture here. So, like that, and add in a few loops, and one more like that. Okay. And this this one as well. So just really doesn't have to be perfect. And add in a few loops. Okay, great. Um, let's quickly unwrap them. So I'm going to open up another window here, another viewport. And let us set this to UV Image Editor and switch to the texture. So there's our texture. Now in my 3D view, press U and project from view. And then we've got the two thing uh, UVs here. And you can see they they look a bit weird. They look a bit squashed. That's just because the the texture isn't square. So it's kind of trying to compensate for the the weird shape. I don't know. But anyway, it's easily solved. We just scale it on the y-axis until it more or less looks like it'll fit. And then, obviously, you can just tweak until it looks good. Just make sure it doesn't overlap anywhere. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. We can keep it like that. Okay looks good. Now let's quickly uh, set up a material for this. So I'm going to switch to the node editor. Uh, I'm going to disable the background image. We don't need it anymore. Okay, um, go to the material um, node editor and add a new node. And we'll call this fern leaf. And let's add in a... It's going to rendered mode so we can see what's happening. Okay, uh, there's not much going on, there's no light, so let's uh, activate this layer for our sun lamp. And now we've got some light, so let's add our texture, uh, image texture. Just add it in there. And select the texture. Okay, so now all the, we've got our image on, mapped onto our planes, but uh, it's got a very black rim there, so we don't want that. Let's um, add in a transparent node, this one here, and add in a mix node, 
mix shader and we just put this one in here so we've got now you can see it has turned somewhat uh, it's, it's got a little bit of transparency but we need a way to tell this that only the black areas should be transparent now that's pretty easy because this is a PNG those black areas are um, actually just a transparent channel in the first place so you can see here we've got an alpha channel and this is the transparent areas on the PNG so we just use this to tell the thing where to be transparent but now the middle is transparent and the outside is black so all we need to do is flip them around and you've got a nice decent looking um, couple of leaves so another thing that we can do on the, to improve this material is to add gloss so we've got a glossy shader and we just add it in here via an add shader if you do this not much happens. You can see it just turns a little bit lighter. Um, that just means that it's reflecting, but there's no real bump map on the leaf. So we need a bump map to make this reflection a bit more interesting. So um, let's add a vector bump. And let's add the color output from our image into the height input. And then add this to the normal inputs of both of these nodes. So now you can see we've got a uh, kind of an interesting reflection going on here and I guess it's a bit strong so I'm going to tone it down okay and we can try and invert it but actually that looks okay um, next we want to tone down the the intensity of the reflection a bit and probably the roughness as well So let's um, do one last thing. Let's add in a shader, translucent shader, and you plug it in between just after the diffuse node here. You can see it, it, it becomes, it, it looks totally wrong. So what you want to do is plug the um, color output into your translucent um, node here. And now, if I if I disable this, you'll see the difference. You can see that it looks more. Um, it looks well. It just looks better. It looks more natural. So um, another thing you can do to uh, to enhance this is to um, add a color mix RGB node. Now this node here, you add it just before the translucent, and set it to add, and select a sort of green yellow sort of color and of course you can set the strength of it using um, the, 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 the value slider here so I think that looks just about alright and so now we have a leaf that has reflections, bumps and some nice translucency effects so um, I'm just gonna disable the background let me make this larger as well and uh, yeah let's uh, get to the fun part so before we begin just select everything and hit P and then buy loose parts this just separates the, the, the meshes into their respective parts now um, we want the, the origin of each leaf to be at the very base of the leaf so just um, click right about in the middle at the bottom of the leaf and then set origin to 3D cursor select this one and do the same click here set origin to 3D cursor okay now let's rotate both leaves that they are more or less standing or more or less pointing straight towards that direction like so and then don't forget to control A rotation control A rotation and you can see here both of them are now ha have their um, rotations applied so that's great uh, let's move this one out of the way for a minute because I don't need it right now um, this is the larger leaf so we don't need it right now this is the smaller one and I'm going to uh, be using this one so let's move it to the 
more or less to the center here and make sure it's looking good and uh, let's take the center and drag it down to get a sort of a V shape and also let's give it a bit of a curl like a real leaf would look by using proportional editing and just rotating it till it looks a little bit more natural and let's smooth it out same with this one just smooth it out give it a little bit of a, a V type of shape and just curl it around as well using proportional editing like so great but we're not going to use that one we're going to focus on this one for a minute um, now let's add in a curve path uh, just, well, it has to be in the center so shift C to move your origin back to the center and curve path so we've got our path here go into edit mode and move the path on the x-axis until the beginning of the path is more or less at the same point as the the base of the leaf so right about like that okay now we want our leaf to be more or less the right size so scale it down a bit and I guess we should scale this one down as well so they're more or less the same size like that should be alright uh, let's let's apply this the scale of each control a scale so our scale is reset back to one uh, let's move this one back out of the way okay now this curve right here is going to be our stem uh, let me move this grid so we can see more clearly so this is going to be the stem of the fern so go to the curve um, edit tab here and increase the depth and you can see now we've got some thickness there but it's only half of the curve so we have to click on here and full to show the full curve and right now it's looking a bit like a just like a cube uh, like a like a square thing so let's increase the resolution and until we've got a nice round cylinder now we want to add another curve path and this one just move it to the side here and we'll call this one stem thickness con control so this is going to control how the stem tapers off towards the end so we click on our, our stem I actually just call it stem and go here and just um, select in this box here taper object select the stem thickness control that's this one right here and the minute you do that it resets back to like zero the curve thickness goes away so we want to bring back that thickness so go into edit mode on the uh, thickness control curve and just drag it to any direction really the entire thing so the thickness looks more or less correct like so and now we want the this end right here to be thinner so obviously we just drag it a little bit until it kind of tapers off so you can see now if you look from the top you can see it tapers off towards the end here actually we can just go a little bit more here something like that okay now we can move this to another layer don't need it right now and now our leaf should probably just call it fern leaf and we call this one yeah stem okay so now we need to have our leaf duplicated along the length of this stem here so let's select the leaf and go to modifiers and add an array modifier and this array we can um, now control how far it sort of um, goes along the curve here and we can also control the distance between the, the leaves so just going to into a render mode and select a nice comfortable distance between the leaves something like that should be alright 
um, we need it on both sides. So let's add a mirror modifier. Control A. Actually, before you do that, just make sure to apply the location of your leaf. So, so that the the um, the origin of the leaf is exactly in the center of the of the of the scene. So let's add in our our mirror modifier and make sure it is mirroring on the y axis in this case. So let's see if this looks okay. And let's just position it until it looks more or less correct. Okay, very nice. Now, next we want to have these leaves follow the curve when we when we um, manipulate the curve we want the leaves to um, follow along so select the leaves and then shift select the curve and press control P on the keyboard and select curve deform now hopefully the curve the uh, the leaves follow the curve which yes perfect so obviously the, the leaves look far too uniform they uh, need to taper off towards the end so um, that, that's that's easy enough to do we just add in a empty plane axis and this empty here is going to be the control that controls our um, leaves uh, how they taper off towards the end of the stem so click on your leaves go to the array modifier here and select a object offset this one here has to be the empty. Actually, let's rename that empty to like leaf size control. So back to our array and select the leaf size control. And immediately the leaves have shifted position. So to, to solve this, we have to oh, let me just leaf size control. Okay. Um, the problem here is that this the leaves now take their um, their position and rotation and scale information from the plane so this is very useful but it can be a bit confusing especially if um, your 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 uh, your your empty isn't um, sort of positioned correctly so to to get it right sometimes you just have to do it manually so I'm, I'm moving it up on the z-axis until it fits with the curve as near as I can get it. So that looks okay. So that this now, if we scale it up and down, you can see it controls the, the general tapering of the leaves. Okay, so next up we want to add, uh, we want to give it a little bit more tapering, probably something like this, and now we want to make sure that the leaves go to the very end of the stem and let's just make sure they align properly they don't align 100% so I'm going to move the empty down on the x-axis just a little bit uh, on the z-axis I mean sorry yeah that looks about right now that we have our, um, our, our fern leaf and we have the stem and we have everything more or less uh, set up uh, we want to really quickly just um, uh, give it the leaves a little bit more variation. As you can see, they're they're very uniform right now. They look very very artificial and fake. So um, we want a little bit more variation in the leaves. Now that's um, rather easy to do. We're going to select our leaves and add a displacement modifier, right? And then add a new texture and go to the, the Textures tab, clicking that button, and add a Clouds um, uh, texture. Let's make the size a little bit larger. Okay, back to the Modifiers tab, and set the strength to an acceptable level. Mm, that might be a little bit much. We just want a little bit of variation. Actually, let's see how this renders. It looks okay, if you ask me. I guess we'll keep it like this for now. I uh, might tweak it a little bit later on. I also noticed that the stem isn't correct. So let's select the stem. 
and add a new material called the material stem and uh, for starters let's just give it a green color uh, desaturate it until it's more or less a natural green type color uh, let's tweak it some more in the material editor it's adding a translucency uh, effect so translucent added a big mix shader mix it in if you look from the bottom here you should see something let's give it a, a yellowish glow yes let's not split hairs that looks okay to me let's also add a glossy effect shader gloss and uh, add in an add shader like so also we could probably use a Fresnel um, a Fresnel shader to sort of um, control it a little bit more so input uh, where is my Fresnel here it is Fresnel and let's just uh, plug it into the strength of the gloss so now if you control shift click on this it will show you the the influence it's having on the on the gloss so I think I need a little bit more control on that so I'm going to add a converter color ramp and now we get to control the oh yeah just control shift click on that control the gloss a little bit more okay that looks fine to me let's see how it looks here this is looking quite all right so now we've got our fern leaf um, we can we've got complete control over everything here we can s control the scale the the location the rotation all of that and um, so now it's just a matter of kind of shaping this until it looks like a, a real fern leaf before you do that there's one last thing you need to do uh, let me just move everything to the correct layers um, okay there are a couple of things actually we still need to do but really quickly so um, this leaf here you might have been wondering what this is for this leaf is made to go on the very tip of the fern so to do that we select our leaves and here in the array modifier we choose our end cap and we'll just rename this to end leaf and so we choose our end leaf and you can see here we've got um, both of them uh, on the on the end of the on the end of the, the stem here so I think the mirror modifier had to come first right and let's just rotate it until it's yes that looks good perfect let's see how it renders okay it's a little bit detached from the fern so I'm going to move it back even more okay and another thing we could do to make it look a little bit more natural is to make a couple of smaller leaves here and kind of something like that okay don't have to split hairs because this isn't really going to be visible we just want it to look a little bit more natural okay and I think uh, we can taper off the leaves a little bit more on the on the y-axis and we can scale this up that looks okay actually you know what this thing can be a little bit more elaborate so let's see how that works Now you can see it's it's tapering off nicely. It's just not connected to the stem, so we just 
bring down count a little bit. But now, the really nice thing is, if you tweak the curve, all of this follows along perfectly. And we can tweak the size of the curve like this, and we can t tweak the rotation using uh, Control T. So this gives us a lot of control over every aspect of the fern. Okay, let's uh, move this to another layer. Let's uh, add in a empty to parent all of this to that empty, so we don't have to select everything every time. So we grab a empty. We'll make it a mm, sphere empty. This one here, and we'll make sure it's exactly at the base of the leaf uh, of the of the fern, whatever this is, fern branch, and we'll just parent everything to that. Or actually, not every yeah. I think everything. Let's see. So make sure you've got everything selected and then select this. Control P, object keep transformation. So now we've got our fern leaf ready to roll. So let's start shaping this and start making fern plant. Let's just duplicate it. Keep that one over there. And uh, select our curve. And whatever you do, don't manipulate the base of the curve because even though it it sort of seems okay, it can really mess with the placement of the leaves. So I like to leave the base of the curve right about there. Okay, so let's start kind of shaping this guy out. Right, and let's give it a bit of a curl, maybe a little bit tighter. Let's subdivide here and just. Now, another thing you'll notice is that the leaves don't stay with the stem. Now, this is because the um, the displacement here is is uh, throwing it off a little bit. So, if you, if you really wanted to, you could. And I'm not sure this will work, but let's try it. We could make a group here, say with these here. Uh, actually, no, these here. Control G, make a new group, and we'll call that group dis displacement influence. Right. So we can make a group that influence where the displacement is going to affect the leaves. So if you enable that displacement influence, then the displacement only influences um, uh, these areas of the leaf. The rest stay exactly where they should. So now it's easier to sort of tweak this cur these uh, leaves until they fit on the curve. Okay, that looks nice. Now, obviously, um, we've got the leaf, and we can still continue to tweak it using Alt A, uh, what is it? Alt, Alt S, sorry, and just. Tweak the size, Control T to tweak the rotation, and keep doing this until I have a very nice natural looking fern. Control T, rotate it. Let's see how this renders. Bring in our light. I think the gloss is a bit strong, so let me. We quickly grab my fern leaf material and just take off some of that gloss. And I think I can add in a little bit more translucency. And I also think um, perhaps, yes, this looks good, good enough to me. So, yes, that's basically it. You keep uh, duplicating this guy. The reason I kept this top one here is just as a backup, so I've still got an unchanged version. So I can move this to another layer. Uh, we'll keep it over here. And yeah, we just uh, tweak this and tweak and tweak until it all looks nice. So I'm going to speed the video up. I guess you guys get the drift.
Okay, so now we've got our two fern plants. They look awesome. They look quite natural. Now we just want to distribute them all across a plane to make a sort of particle system that uh, looks quite good, quite natural. So, first of all, make a group of this fern. Control G, so it turns green there. And name it fern1. And this one can be control G and we call it fern two. Okay. Now let's go to another layer. Add a mesh plane. Make the plane a little bit larger. And add in a few subdivisions. Let's add a displacement to our plane. Clouds, I guess I'll use clouds here. That looks fine. Uh, let's add a couple of more subdivisions. That looks okay. Let's take down the strength. Uh, 0 0.05. Smooth it out. This uh, is just to give some variation to the particle system. So now let's add a particle system. New. We call our particle system Ferns1. And um, we'll make it here. We'll make about, say, 300 of these. Mm, 300 might be a bit, bit much. Let's do 250. Okay. Down here in the render settings, we choose group. And we'll choose fern1. And immediately, you can see there's something wrong. It doesn't look right. So you have to click whole group. So it's using the entire group. And again, it goes completely haywire. So the problem, of, of course, um, is that you have to position these groups, both of these. And I guess I'll take both of them at the same time. You have to posi position them correctly. So so if I move them on the x-axis, it kind of moves them all straight up to the... I wonder. We have to move them so that their bases are exactly on the plane. So x, or not exactly, just more or less, okay? And then rotate them. Actually, rotate them individually, I suppose. Uh, I guess this one first. Yes, just rotate, rotate them by 90 degrees, more or less. And that's looking like they're all growing out of the ground. Right, but now there's a problem. They're all... Uh, so, again, just to recap what I just did, I kind of rotated both of these, uh, moved and rotated them until they looked right on the plane. I couldn't find any other way of doing this. I don't know, perhaps there's a better way to... But somehow... If you move these, then everything else on the plane gets affected. So you just basically have to position them correctly so that they look like they're growing out of the plane. So that's that's how I do it. I know perhaps there's a better way. But um, now that they're all growing in the right direction, and we've got them both uh, kind of orientated properly, you can see that there's no randomness to this whatsoever. They're all growing in exactly the same way, exactly the same size. So let's fix that. First of all, random size. Right here, under the render settings, you can make some of them smaller and some of them larger. So that's already helping quite a bit to make it look quite uh, random. And next up, you want to go to, you want to click advanced here to show advanced settings for the system. And then click on uh, rotation right here. So let's uh, increase the random rotation and make sure this is set to normal. Random rotation, rotation, sorry. All the way up. And you can tweak it a little bit and play around with it until you get something that looks nice. This looks okay to me. Let's see what it looks like with a light. And if you look from the side, it's already starting to look quite good. But uh, I think 
you could get away with this. You could have just one um, system. But I'm going to use both just because I've already done all the effort of making both. So this one is, uh, this group is uh, fern 2. So we go back to our plane and add in another particle system. And we'll select ferns 1 and just select this little button here to make it a particle system of its own. And we'll call it fern 2. <clears throat> and we'll uh, just select the other group. And again, you can see immediately it's in the wrong place. So we have to move this entire thing until it looks right. And I believe... Oops. Right. Yes, just move it. Uh, let's move this fern to its own layer. Otherwise, we're going to get confused really fast. So that's what we've got there. Just move it until it looks more or less right. That looks okay. Something like that. Okay, now we've got both of these systems. But I think I want the second system to be smaller. So we want the ferns uh, overall to be a little bit smaller. So uh, how did I do this? Size, right. We can tweak the size here. And let's disable the first one so you can see what's going on. And make them a little bit smaller. That looks okay. And we can make them slightly more as well. So now we've got a smaller system, a bunch of smaller ferns, like the younger, smaller plants, and then the older plants here. And now, if we render this... Uh, where's my light? Here it is. You can see it's it's growing in a very natural way. The only thing that ruins this, obviously, is the white plane. So let's quickly um, um, make it a little bit more natural, uh, a little bit more natural color. So we call this ground. And uh, I wonder if I have a ground texture anywhere. So let me just check if I've uh, gone to the node editor here, add a image texture, open. And let me see if I have a ground texture. Let's see if I've got anything. Whew. Well, this this will work. Oh, no, let me, let me use this one. Okay. Let's map it in here. Let's see what we got. Uh, let me disable both those particle systems so that I can see what's going on. Uh, nothing. Let's UV unwrap this plane. Select everything, you unwrap. Let's see what happens. Oh, beautiful. But it's a bit large, so let's scale it up. Like four. Mm, still a bit large. That looks okay. Um, yep, let's see how this looks. Okay. And that's looking quite quite natural. I think this is maybe a little bit larger still. Let's do 10, 10, 10. Quite nice. Now, let's add in the camera and render out a quick image here. So, Shift A, camera, Control, Alt, 0 on the numpad to kind of position this right. Let's go for, for a side shot like this, perhaps. And let's position our light so that it's kind of sh shining from a, from a nice angle here. Like this. Let's add in another light here, shining from the opposite side. And uh, let's make this light here bluish. And set the strength uh, down to say 0.3 this one can be the strength of about 2 and uh, let's give this one a yellowy yellowish or reddish tone and uh, obviously we want to backlight so that we can make use of that lovely transparent uh, translucent effect on the leaves so let's shine our backlight from here set it to 1 and give it a maybe a little bit of a greenish to simulate a sort of forest look. 
So, uh, let's see how that renders. Okay, this looks um, quite good already. Uh, I think let's uh, enable a couple more effects here. Let's go to Passes and enable the Mist Pass. And if you look from the top view by s and select your camera, you can uh, enable this uh, Mist uh, checkbox here to show where exactly the mist is going to start and end. So right now it doesn't look right. We have to kind of tweak this, go to the World tab, and here under Mist Pass, you can tweak where the mist begins. So right about there at the camera, and then where it ends, <coughs> the depth here, right about there. So the mist starts exactly at this point and ends right about there. So uh, let's re-render this. Okay, so now here's our, um, our here are our final ferns and they're all growing out of the ground and it's looking wonderful and very nice. Let's just um, do something about the background and um, I'm not going to add in a proper background, we'll just take away this empty space here and perhaps add a mist effect in the compositor. So let's quickly do that. Um, I'm going to, res to reset my view layout here. Uh, do this, get the render result. Okay, so the, here's our render, and let's go to the composite here, use nodes, and let's disable this here. Right. So, mist, we want a little bit of mist here, so let's add in a color mix node, set it to add, get our mist. That's looking cool but weird, so let's add a background. So color alpha over, and set it to like so, and a little bit darker perhaps with a little bit of blue, something like that. Okay, you can't see the blue because the mist is taking over completely, so let's tone back the mist a little bit, a little bit more, something like that. Now obviously you can add in whatever you want, some trees or some rocks and mountains or whatever you really want to do. Um, I'm going to do a couple more things uh, to make this look as good as I can um, in the short time that I have. So uh, I'll quickly do that and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so this is the final image that I have here. I uh, really just um, added in a few trees here um, and some rocks. Um, uh, uh, worked a little bit more on the lighting, added some shadows from, from, from trees, which are really just some planes from above the scene here. Here you can see what the, the scene looks like. I have some fake shadows coming from above here to kind of simulate the, the shadows that real trees would make. Here are my tree trunks, quite straightforward. And then obviously I have some rocks down here. Now, um, one thing to note is that all of these materials are from, uh, Renante Martinez's, um, very, very awesome uh, cycles material vault. So those allowed me to really quickly uh, flesh out the scene a little bit and add a, a little bit more interesting detail. So uh, obviously I will uh, make this blend file available to you guys. Uh, you can check in the description of the video. And um, if you have any questions, ask me in the comments. And I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And uh, yeah, stay cool and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.